<laughs> okay, right. Now, great privilege, this one, and real glamour in it, because... Uh, this is aircraft of a remarkable new type. Um, John McGuinness and his family are here. It's a family enterprise. And he's going to tell us about it because we do know from our own uh, uh, research in our reports, uh, we've got a report on drones and a report on manned aircrafts. We know that these things, the time has come. And obviously the market for drones is uh, multi-billion dollar already and uh, the interesting thing is now passenger aircraft are coming right the small aircraft but we need to hear not from me but from the expert John can you fill us in and how you're moving it forward in a remarkable way I'd be happy to do so uh, this is a family project to create a technology demonstrator for a breakthrough in our understanding of why we never conquered a particular domain of flight where very well we fly very efficiently with commercial aircraft and we can fly very slowly with gliders and sailplanes with efficiency. But an airplane that's 150 to 450 miles per hour, we use six to eight times too much energy for the amount of momentum we achieve. So the breakthrough allows us to use active drag reduction and other drag reduction principles, create more stability and control. And for the world of electric vehicles, it's transformative. We have the ability to carry more weight without the weight penalty without the architectural penalty of the batteries or so on that would store our energy. So in an electric implementation, this aircraft, we can fly a family of people for three hours and we'll fly so fast that we have a tremendous range. Right, now that's initially with uh, diesel, uh, is, is it? Um, no, you're going to I later was, be electric or? I was specifically referring you're talking to an electric. electric version. Excellent, yes. okay, right. But you, how are you starting? You, when will you have something for sale? Well, the problem is, is that you can't have something for sale. You have mm. to have lots of somethings for sale yes, because everyone yeah. really needs this as a fundamental yeah. need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So will you manufacture or license? Uh, or? Our, our pathway gets us to um, an, an awareness among the public that's a little bit hard to meet. So uh, we have to market first to our niche, our early adopters yeah. in the kit markets. And we have to develop uh, certified versions, but we mostly have to have a real product, and our, our real product is the ability to manufacture these in scale, to deploy them at low cost and high volume. So that means a partner? Oh, no, it, it means an entire industry and a reimagining of that. Right. So it's nowhere near soon, or what? It's a long process. Right. It's like eating an elephant one yeah. bite at a time. Aha, right, okay. But this is no elephant. This is gorgeous. Now, you, I think you told me that you had working models. This is not that's a one of them. That sure. is a working model. Yeah, that's a 33% okay. so What we're seeing here is something that looks like nothing on earth, basically. And uh, I know that I insulted you by referring to a box wing, and you corrected me. Uh, so could you tell us about the aerodynamics? Uh, what's clever? Um, there are six ingredient technologies. First, we have a passive drag reduction suite of technologies, starting with our configurational advantage. The double box tail configuration gives us stability and control by means of induced drag reduction, means I carry more, carry more weight for a given span with less penalty. It leads to natural laminar flow and subsonic area ruling as technological, uh, technologies that help us uh, break through this barrier. And once we reach the speeds where these technologies are most relevant, we also reach the domain of active drag reduction. When you get into the higher speed ranges, we can mitigate drag directly through the application of power. And we can use boundary layer control and wake propulsion as ways to take away most of the need for more thrust and more installed power. So we're basically talking about improved aerodynamics giving us longer endurance, longer range. Uh, but what, are we, what is the twinkle in your eye? Is this something that's uh, a trainer aircraft, a tourist aircraft up for an hour when it's electric and working at any time of the day and night, of course, because it's pretty well silent? Or is it something that's going to be a feeder aircraft for 20 people? Or what's the so sweet spot? The sweet spot is every human needs on-demand regional mobility for a small group of people. Right. And we don't actually have that. We have an automobile, yeah. which gives us on-demand local mobility, mm. and we have airliners, which give us on-demand intercontinental mobility. Mm. But in the smaller distances, say between uh, two-hour drive and all-day drive, 
there's nothing but pain. We use yeah. airliners the wrong way. So having an autonomous smart plane that yeah. doesn't require extensive pilot training, wherein a user can say to his electronic assistant, we'd like to fly from here to there, yeah. that's the holy grail. And what's, not, what's missing is not the technology of that part. That's easy. We've had autonomous airplanes for 50 years. What's missing is that we never built real good aerodynamics into the small airplanes. We couldn't have because we were taught something that isn't quite correct in our physics a long time ago. But you're, uh, are you perhaps getting a bit ahead of yourself in that you say autonomous planes, um, the autopilot in an airliner is not true autonomy and the airliners I thought don't do a very good job of collision avoidance, identifying flying objects from other planes or birds coming towards them. They're not really very good at that. So in terms of true autonomy, we had drones, but, but not planes with people in, do we? Our, our, yes, we do. We do. We've actually oh, had self-flying right. autonomous airplanes and that technology for more than 50 years. Right. And by comparison, you know, the hazards of driving down a narrow pathway with dogs running out in front yes. of the car and other things, yes. the, threat, the threat matrix is overwhelming. Yes. Whereas in the sky, you can go out in the sky and, you know, if you're anywhere even supposedly near an airport, you'll look around yes. and you'll see there's nothing but empty oh, it's sky. It's pretty empty, but nevertheless, so, if air traffic control made a mistake and you were heading straight towards another plane, it doesn't do a very clever job of telling you about okay, it and dealing with it. Modern it? systems can identify that mm. and manage that better than humans can. Re and we yeah. have that technology already packaged today. Commercially available off-the-shelf right. technology can okay. navigate, fly, and emergency right. land almost any aircraft. Excellent. And we need a home to take that simple technology and right. put it to use. The missing ingredient is the efficient aircraft. Yes, yes, right. So we're going to have autonomous cars, which almost certainly are not going to be private cars much. They're going to be autonomous taxis. And you sound to me as if you're talking, at least in part, about the uh, flying version of that. Some of these will be air taxis, is that right? They won't necessarily be all privately owned. The majority of Earth species fly for the simple reason that it's the most efficient way from going from one arbitrary location to another arbitrary location. This decentralizes everything. Instead of having a concentration where airliners are forced to land every minute on this tiny little strip, we take all those people and we distribute them out into where they really want to go, and they don't even come close to concentrating together. So the autonomy allows people to reduce their regulatory burden and their, uh, their training burden. And the timeline of how this deploys is such that the infrastructure and the regulation precedes the availability of adequate numbers of vehicles. Okay, and there's obviously a lot of um, development paths on all these things. Um, that can that have um, a, a range extended significantly like the by aviation and other planes uh, with solar wings is that a, a, a useful adjunct at some stage it's not central but i mean we, is, will we that have help? a proprietary technology which were uh, is pre-competitive we're not disclosing but in which range is really not a principal limitation for us so without solar just well Solar can certainly play a, a part, and it we're can. interested in that. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Right. We also feel that electric is the preferred method for propulsion integration. It's not necessarily an energy-dependent uh, arrangement. It's energy-independent. So oh, I can have yes. uh, hybrid systems yes. in which I have uh, fuel sources, for example, for the high-power climb-to-altitude applications. But we have a drag mit mitigation technology Yes. that allows us to put an object in motion and yeah. have it remain in motion yeah. because we're, we're removing the only thing it's acting against, which is the atmos viscous atmospheric drag of having lift and, and moving very quickly. And, and in terms of, again, a twinkle in your eye, a technology roadmap, uh, what about extremely short takeoff and landing? Are these going to be taking off from the terminal building literally on top of the terminal building by means of motors in the wheels before the propeller gets up to speed? Uh, do you dream of those things too? Yeah, you're talking to an aircraft designer. So of course, we have vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that follow on. We have multiple iterations of other and related technologies. We even have the future flying car. It's not time to talk about any of those things. It's time to look at the history of the facts that we didn't fix the problem 
in one aviation domain mm. of making something mm. that the public can operate. Yes. We want to yes. do that first. Yes. Oh, that's nice. And what in... We're all going to be living in cities, or most of us, 70% soon and 2080. Well, so they say. But I mean, that seems cities to be the trend. Are an outgrowth of our I lack realize. Of regional mobility. Well, this so might, yes. the 20-minute commute or the half-hour commute, whatever our time budget is, yeah, that yeah. defines the area in which we live. And if we increase that time budget through affordable regional mobility, yep, yep. we decentralize our need for cities. We yep. don't have to bring everything in the city to our home environment, and we don't have to worry about. Uh, leaving our home environment for other resources nearby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where I live in Montana, it's five hours mm. yes, to indeed. those resources. Yes. Yes. And it's over mountain passes in the yes. winter. So uh, yes. aviation turns that five hours into a half hour. Yes. Uh, in terms of where we are now, though, there are more than half of the people in the world living in cities. And in terms of easing that situation, What's the sort of minimum endurance needed for approval of any form of aircraft, vertical or this type, in a city? I mean, we see things like the volocopter and the Chinese uh, unique, uh, is it, uh, uh, drone, manned drone. I mean, these things are sort of like 20 minutes, 40 minutes, <coughs> not even an hour. Now that sounds to me something extremely dangerous in a city. Surely it will not be allowed to fly in a city if it has that level of margin of safety. There's no margin of safety, but one day they'll be better. Yes, uh, but uh, do the, you the have pace a view of the, on that? I mean, the pace of the required change is slow enough that most of those issues evaporate before they cause trouble for us because right, right. the number of vehicles and the deployment of the vehicles are up against regulatory barriers and mm. science barriers, mm. manufacturing barriers and other barriers. So we feel like um, one thing we can do that helps a lot is understanding that our desire is shared for safety and economy and range and all of these things, noise abatement, mm. and it all revolves around the design of the vehicle itself. Yes. So if you have a powered lift vehicle, you're very dependent. There mm. are other technologies that deliver the same goal. And I can show those technologies in the future, in a future right. form. And where you mean in short takeoff? Share, short takeoff, mm. vertical takeoff. Mm. All of these technologies flow from good physics in aerodynamics. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. I mean, talking about good physics, good engineering, we've always been taught that uh, good engineering is beautiful. Boy, this is beautiful. This is good engineering. Thank you very much. Can, can we uh, get close to the, to the mural? This is 4,000 photos of my family and I building this aircraft in our family Wonderful. garage. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs>